Hello, I'm Andy Rizika, and today I'm joined by Damian D. Smith, actor, writer, producer, director, all the above. Many of you know him from his work as an actor via The Purge on TV. But today I'm bringing him on to talk about the waves he's making behind the scenes. And in particular, a documentary he produced called Target St. Louis, Volume 1. Damien, thank you so much for taking time uh, out of your busy schedule to talk to us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. So we're going to talk directly about this film, first of all, because it's such an important documentary. True story, of course. Can you just briefly introduce it to our audience and maybe something you learned that you didn't know about this true story along the way? Uh, thank you. Uh, the documentary is Target St. Louis Volume 1. It's about post-World post War II during the Cold War era. The military conducted secret chemical testing on the most vulnerable population of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, it, you know, um, <clears throat> back in the day, you know, uh, for an example, back in the day, you know, their trucks used to pass by spraying for mosquitoes, you know, pesticides. In those cases, they, was, they were spraying uh, white phosphorus, zinc, cadmium sulfide, and other elements. So that's what the documentary explores, and it's told through the eyes of survivors. People that were children at the time, you know, playing in those playgrounds, but now they're in their 70s and they're sharing their stories and we're interlacing inter inter uh, it with, you know, fact and information and things like that. So I directed this film, Target St. Louis, Volume 1, this documentary. So uh, that's what it's about. <laughs> So you've come you know, from acting and directing. What brought you to specifically that made you passionate enough to make this documentary? Well, you know, uh, what made me uh, passionate about this documentary is first, I'm from St. Louis, born and raised on the north side of St. Louis, Missouri. And how I came to the story, my grandmother and I, we used to, how she used to communicate with me, she used to mail me letters, you know, mail clippings and things like that. Most of the time, the letters were about family gossip, you know, things, how they, how they go. But this one particular time, she had mailed me a clipping of a news of the, of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, I believe, and it was of, of Dr. M Lisa Martino Taylor's findings. Uh, they wrote, she had their dissertation, and they wrote some things out about the Pruitt Igo, what happened around the Pruitt Igo neighborhood of no in the north side of St. Louis with some secret chemical testing. And my grandmother said that she was, this is the neighborhood that she grew up in, and she was a part of that. She remembers these things as a kid, and she remembers, uh, these situations and remember as kids, they, they spoke about it as kind of like the boogeyman, those type of things. So uh, within doing some further research, uh, I was very interested about this and to find out that it happened, again, concurrent of the Tuskegee experiments and to, again, the most vulnerable population of St. Louis, my aunts, uncles, uh, family members, friends, I had to. Um, I had a. I have a skill set of telling stories. I've been a filmmaker, and I want to use my uh, skill set to help out the people of St. Louis, from where I'm from. Is it um, just incredible to you that this story is really still kind of swept under the rug, and to this oh, day, yeah. almost nobody's been held accountable. No one has been held accountable about this situation, and you'll find out through the, through the documentary. Why so? Um, and it, it blew my mind. And I'm sorry to follow up on your other question. What I learned was that not only uh, in St. Louis were well, the tests were happening secretly, but African Americans were used exclusively for testing on certain things. For if we can double back to the uh, you know the syphilis test in Tuskegee, in which that they you know developed a effective vaccine off the literally off the backs spinal fluid and, you know, things they got from the men from the uh, Tuskegee experiments to help develop the, 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 the um, vaccine that we use. So the role that we play in medical development has been significant and we get l very little recognition for it. Now, you've been a director behind the scenes before where you're directing actors. This time for this documentary, you're talking to real people. Was it hard to get them to talk and even open up on camera? You know what? Uh, that was very interesting. Interesting to me that it wasn't at all, because the, the these people that are the participants in this documentary, they want to tell their stories, and and again, like the the, the majority of them are in their seventies, so they don't have any financial gain out of this. They don't have anything that's going to change their life too drastically, except getting this knowledge out and getting and getting it to the people and let them know that we need to be looking out and watch over these situations about the environment in St. Louis, Missouri, you know, cause it, cause they have generations, they have grandchildren, great grandchildren, children that uh, was affected, affected by this directly or indirectly, you know? 
So the title is Target St. Louis Volume 1. Does that indicate there's going to be a Volume 2, Volume 3, maybe no, Volume really. 8? I mean, you know what? Great question. So again, um, I, I'm a filmmaker as well. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an actor, but I'm a filmmaker as well. And I have a vision for St. Louis that I would like to uh, bring the film industry more to St. Louis, Missouri. That's why, that's what I have. So Target St. Louis Volume 1 is the first installment of an anthology series of films that I would like to direct and shoot in St. Louis exclusively. I'm not going to shoot all my movies in St. Louis, but I do have a set that I would like to, again, introduce the film industry, the film culture in the St. Louis, uh, and, and it's going to be through these series of films. And this is... Target St. Louis Volume 1, and there will be a Volume 2 coming soon, uh, which is related to some other scripts and narratives and other documentaries, again, based in St. Louis, Missouri. And you have some important news that just this past weekend, your film won a major award. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so happy to share this. Uh, we won Best Documentary Feature at the Urban World Film Festival, the 25th anniversary of the Urban World Film Festival. So we are super excited. We're just learning about this. It just came out in all the trades. You know, we're in Deadline, we're in Variety, we're in, we're in, we're in St. Louis TV. We're, we're moving, baby. You know, uh, Target St. Louis is moving, uh, volume one. We're moving and I'm so happy because the goal of this documentary is to get the word out and to, to, uh, to uh, bring, you know, uh, a little light in the darkness, you know, and, and speak and give a voice to the voiceless. So that was the goal of the documentary. That's why I did it, it was out of passion. And I'm so happy that it's being recognized to a point that, you know, uh, people, you know, it's, it's been awarded these uh, accolades because the only that's going to do is just help get the word out even more. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. So that was in New York, the Urban World F uh, Film Festival. You're also going to be in the St. Louis International Film Festival soon, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Coming soon at, at the first week of November, uh, to be exact. I don't know the exact date, but we're going to be pushing it out all around on all our social media and everywhere. Uh, we'll be in, Sa in the St. Louis International Film Festival. We cannot wait to show this film to our hometown people because this is what it's intended for. I know there's a whole... Um, a big group of the Pruitt Igo uh, Association of, of that, that grew up in that area. They they come together every year. They're coming, families, friends, um, you know, people of St. Louis of note. I cannot wait to us for all for us all to converge at the St. Louis International Film Festival the first week in November. It's going to be excellent. I do want to talk about your acting because you know you you obviously know your way around now the backside of of production, but from the acting perspective, can you talk about how, how you've come from, you know, St. Louis and now you're on The Purge and Snowfall and just your acting career in general as well? Well, you know, I, I, I quickly, I try to sum it up real quick. I went from St. Louis and went to New York and I went to New York and I studied theater. Uh, it's my passion, my love. And we did, I did a lot of theater in New York. And once I got, once I got to a point where I felt I wanted to go for my other passions, which is film and TV, I forgot I had to go to LA. So once I did a one-man show, I did I did a one-man show in New York and it, it was received well and I got nominated for a couple of awards. That kind of gave me the, you know, the confidence to go out to LA and focus on what I, the other elements of my passion, which is uh, film and television. Uh, storytelling mostly, you know, to sum it up. Um, and uh, so when I got to LA, also I'm working and I'm learning, like I said earlier, my craft being a, everything I can and when I got over here man, I just hit the ground brother so that's kind of like my trajectory but it was it was all based within the art so from New York I'm from St. Louis I went straight to New York because I felt I, I knew that's where actors that I loved the people that I that I looked up to the Pacinos the Denzels the the all of the, the Sams all the great actors started in theater in New York in my opinion so that's when when I was at that age so I said you know that's what I knew and that's why I took my jump and I moved to New York not knowing anyone and not knowing the soul and took that shot, brother. Well, we're running out of time here. Can you just tell people where they can find information about Target St. Louis Volume 1, maybe where they can download it or, or just find information online? Oh, sure, no problem. You can uh, easily, you can follow me on um, IG and Facebook at Damien D. Smith. And also you can follow Target St. Louis Volume 1. It's Target St. Louis V O L one on Instagram and Facebook as well. So I, I would I, I'm constantly posting all our updates, all our information. So you can follow my page or their page or both pages, and you'll be up to date for everything that I have going on, and also the documentary got going on and coming up because we have some really really cool things coming out soon on all fronts. 
Well, good luck. Well, congratulations on the award and good luck in all your future projects. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you, St. Louis TV, for having me. Thanks to D, uh, Damian D. Smith for coming on and talking about Target St. Louis Volume 1. I hope everyone comes out and watches this film, especially when it comes to the St. Louis International Film Festival. And after you check out his film, be sure and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I thank you for watching STL TV Experience St. Louis.